Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be playing a new game out. It's called Rogue State. It's available on Steam. Just came out a couple of days ago and puts you in control of a hypothetical Middle Eastern-ish country uh, called Basenji. So um, this is kind of a leader simulator, if you will. You, you're put in charge of a uh, country just shortly after a revolution. Um, so let's go ahead and let's jump in. This will be kind of a first take. Uh, family name, we'll just uh, call ourselves uh, Gamer. I don't, I don't know, that's a weird name. But hey, it's me, right? And then we can choose either a man or a woman for our character. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose a woman, cause the, or a man. Okay, so this is a little exposition that uh, gives a little bit of an intro into the situation that you're taking over as the uh, ruler. Okay, so it's definitely, as I said, kind of a Middle Eastern country when you kind of look at people's skin tones and complexions and, you know, with the idea of overthrowing a corrupt leader, some of the style of some of the artwork or whatnot in the game makes it feel kind of like it might be based on Iran. Um, yeah, and with the reference to the American imperialist, it also to me seems to be very Iranian, kind of like a uh, post-Shah revolution in Iran. The main difference, I would say, is that at least as of thus far, it has not really referenced any kind of religion. Uh, but leaving out the religious aspect, it certainly seems to be very similar to um, kind of the situation in Iran post-Shah with a revolutionary council and, and whatnot. And the uniforms, again, look very Middle Eastern and very much like what the Iranian military's uh, traditional uniforms looked like. Okay, so you can tell, obviously, you know, his brother was pretty popular and wasn't chosen to be the ruler, so he was, uh, which again seems to maybe be um, a potential political factor you need to keep in mind. This kind of reminds me very loosely of Hidden Agenda, which was kind of a 1980s or early 90s game, which put you in control of uh, a Latin American country um, just after a revolution that overthrew um, a tyrannical government. So again, you can see here that your country is called Basenji. That's a hypothetical country, obviously. And now we need to go ahead and choose our ministers, it looks like. So our first is the finance minister. Um, as glorious leader of the newly formed People's Republic of Basenji, you elect to, se to set your office in the royal palace of the late tyrant king. Outside, hundreds of workers dismantled the bloodstained barricades installed by the monarchs last year. Another painful reminder of all that was lost in the war. Key revolutionary figures across a spectrum of political ideologues now selflessly look to be rewarded with appointments to inner cabinet positions. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, there's only five people to choose from, and there's only five positions, so I guess everybody has to be a member of parliament, which is, you know, it'd be kind of neat if you had to pick and choose between different, um, fact, you know, different people, um, and maybe you weren't able to choose everyone, then you can't please everyone. So I think finance minister it would make sense to have a capitalist in charge. Assigning a defense minister will boost our military loyalty by two a turn, as defense minister Farouk will drop your military's loyalty by two per turn. Okay, so... Actually, wait, let's see here. What were the rules of finance? Assigning a minister gives you three million income per turn as finance minister Farouk will funnel five million a turn into his private accounts. So it definitely seems like Farouk is gonna be the main obstacle in our government. Um, he's obviously probably not very happy that uh, that we didn't, that he didn't get to be in charge. Um, these others don't seem to have any kind of negative impacts, at least it's not directly mentioned. Um, so foreign minister boost foreign relations by one per turn as foreign minister Farouk will poison relations with the Americans by one per turn. 
Lovely. Um, I think he's the least damaging, at least in intelligence thus far. Communications minister. So basically, he hurts you in internal politics with communications. He hurts you in foreign affairs as uh, a foreign affairs minister, or uh, as the defense minister, he hurts the army's loyalty. So it seems like intelligence is probably the best place to put him. Um, I guess you can probably choose not to assign people, because it, it kind of assu it assumes or sounds like you can choose not to have people um, assigned to a position. So we'll make Rena our defense minister, as she's a patriot. And then we'll go ahead and have... Hmm, do we want a foreign minister or communications minister? I think we'll go with communications. So we're going to go without a foreign minister at this point. Okay. New arrivals to the people's Basenji may benefit from the in-game manual located here. Okay. Okay, so we've got an advisor. Sure. What is our treasury funds? Loyalty. Okay, so we've got 60 loyalty on the bottom, and we've got 310 million with a 1 million bonus per turn. We need to rebuild basic infrastructure, so if we go up here, it looks like this is some kind of tutorial. We can go ahead and choose to build infrastructure. Seems people were without water and sewage. It'll cost us treasury funds to restore it. When you're ready to click on the restore water and sewage icon. So, restore water and sewage. Costs $10 million. We'll need some help from, so there's a foreign workers button. Okay. Choose between prioritizing medical and engineering relief now. Allow foreign aid workers. Medical team will tend to your sick and wounded civilian population. Or allow foreign aid workers engineering team. Move debris, stabilize structures, restore roadways. This will speed up the time needed to reconstruct Basenji's essential services and will assist the military in moving resources in and out of cities. Okay, I guess we'll go with that. And restore power to our population. Okay. So it's kind of like a little tutorial there. And again, we can just hit F1 if we want to go to the policies. We're kind of playing, like I said, through this tutorial. I don't know if you can really hear the audio, but there is uh, voiceovers in this, and there's also music in it. And again, it's a very Middle Eastern theme. So our economy is stagnant and workers feel exploited. May I suggest one of your first edicts you implement a minimum wage? Nothing too extreme, or our capitalists will protest. Um, so that's minimum wage. So we have no minimum wage right now, and we can use a slider here to establish an extremely low minimum wage. Let's open the doors to private enterprise and permit free trade zones. Okay, so again, this is just kind of walking us through some of the death penalty. Where are we looking? Where is the free trade area? No. Um. Free trade zones. Okay. So custom duties apply to all foreign imports. Excellent. Keep a close eye on how much each faction of prices are raising and falling each turn. Okay. So you can see here on the bottom of the screen, you've got patriots, capitalists, fundamentalists, and liberals. They all have different approval ratings of you right now. It looks like we have over 50% of everyone, although the capitalists and the liberals are both not terribly pleased with us. The fundamentalists and the patriots, however, are, uh, which makes up about half the country. Um, and there's different types of factors. So labor rights, for example, it'll highlight the 
icons up on top here when we uh, hover over each one of these different um, kind of factors to consider. Okay, um, we'll look more of that stuff later. Again, this is just some kind of quick tutorial that's kind of guiding us through getting everything started. Raising taxes will lower your approval, but it may be necessary in the short term. Raise taxes to 15% just for now. So we're at 13%, which is pretty low, I would think. Um, we raise it to 15. We can't export our, our goods yet. But um, forming an export economy and ensuring you get the best possible prices when trading with neighbors will be essential. For now, let's close this. Okay. Okay. Infrastructure, policy, neighbors, moving military units cost time points. Okay. So one obvious difference between us and Iran is the fact that Iran is an oil-rich country and it doesn't seem like we are a wealthy country. So maybe it's more accurate to say we're something like Syria. These bonuses will help you grow favor among the people over the long term. When you're ready, close this window. Let me show you something else. Okay. Fast cuisine, fast food production, religious broadcast, smartphone manufacturing, automotive manufacturing, media, oil. Oil would be nice. Let's get oil. People love Farouk, so you need to keep him in your regime, but should keep a close eye on loyalty of your legislative assembly. When faction approval drops, when your cabinet members get displeased, uh, we start to lose wars or run out of funds. That's when our parliamentary loyalty shift. Their loyalties represented with loyalty points that are currency. If you start seeing loyalty points drop, then something's seriously wrong with Basenji. If loyalty falls too low, Farouk may attempt to push us out of power. But now let's take a closer look at the parliament window. Okay, so we can go ahead and take a look at parliament, which is F3. Um, and again, there are different requests of cabinet ministers. Um, and you can see here there is a parliament. So um, it may be a revolutionary council, if you will. Uh, but it does have a, a parliament with a glorious leader in the center. And you can see green represents parliamentary support. Uh, I would assume as things turn more red, uh, parliament uh, individuals become more um, disloyal. So there's parliamentary seats here. Um, I don't know what the West Wing and East Wing mean or the Quarful Caucus. Maybe we'll find out more. Um, your loyalty points remain static. Okay. Okay, so, um, well, our phone's ringing, so let's go pick up the red phone. Let's see what's up. Okay, so it looks like there's another country that's calling us. Oh, okay. So these individuals helped overthrow our king. You know, the leader of Basenji, one of these guys, he looks a lot like the former leader of Haran. Not the Ayatollah, but the guy, I forget what, whatever the like president's name. It's our responsibility to govern in the strictest traditions of the old ways and protect the people from heretic, 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 heretical, I can't pronounce that, heretical philosophies. We want to work with you and advance human rights and freedoms in the region. We're interested in joining funding with the United States, developing projects. Eh. We're interested in negotiating a trade agreement where we purchase your spices. So it looks like we purchase your goats. I don't know if I really want to... Uh, how about this? Let's 
spiritual leadership is important, but we also must accept little interpretations of old ways and not make sense in this day and age. Looks like we didn't have a choice there. Okay, so it sounds like they're not um, a theo they're not a theocratic regime, uh, so they're not ruled by religion. But it does sound like religion is going to play a factor in this game. Um, let's see here, we've used one of our points up. We'll go ahead and take a look at the regional map here. So you can see Basenji is in the middle, and we've got a Trajikistan, a Babelstan, and Zarbil. So Babelstan helped us overthrow the king. Um, I'm not sure what to make of Tajikistan or Zarbil. Looks like with them, there's an option to build an oil pipeline. Spend three million a turn for ten turns to build an oil pipeline, which will provide an extra five million a turn when completed. Foreign minister loyalty must remain at least sixty percent throughout the construction period. Armed conflict will result in the destruction of this pipeline. Interesting. And we can also assist the military. Looks like we can do that anywhere. There's also border control options. Shared border is currently undefended. Passports, okay. So we can change kind of the standard or the status of our border ship relations. Excellently, it's time for the people of Basenji to erect a statue depicting the great revolution and our triumph over the evil King Solomon. The Ministry of Communications is deadlocked as to where it should be placed and would like your opinion. Okay, so it looks like there's some other factors. We've got our neighbors here in Zarbal, Tajikistan, and Babelstan, and I'm guessing Tajikistan is a communist country by this red flag with our yellow star. Um, we also have to factor in, it looks like, relations with the United States and with the United Nations. Everything's pretty neutral right now with everybody. Um, so let's see here, where do we want to put it? We can put it in the town square so all the people can commemorate the moment on this occasion. Put it in front of the state cemetery so we can remember those who fell on the revolution. Place it directly in front of the American embassy with a reminder that Basenjis will not soon forget their support of the late king. That would be a little bit provocative against the United States, although it may be popular. Uh, place it next to Basenjis legislative assembly so our ministers never forget their first loyalty is to the cause. Or place it in front of the royal palace so my role in the revolution is never forgotten. Um, well, this one would be kind of dictatorial of me. Be like, yeah, that's right. I'm the one who helped overthrow the enemy. Um, I wonder if it would raise our public opinion, though. Um, we could put it in front of the state cemetery so we never forget those who are lost in the revolution. That might be popular. So it looks like that increased the popularity or the uh, happiness of our... Patriots, and it didn't look like it made anyone upset as far as I could tell. Patriots, 61% approval. Fundamentalist, 62%. You know, all the capitalists are at 51, and the liberals are at 47. Overall popularity is at 55. Looks like the... Um, if we go to the parliament, let's we'll take a look and see what things look like there. So overall support doesn't look like it's changed. Okay. Newspaper. What's that say? I really like the look and feel of this game. It's it's a very um, interesting. State cemetery designed as a site for a new monument. Local patriots flagrantly violate public intoxication laws. Public assured that income taxes increase are temporary. Okay. There's our newspaper. Um, treasury and commodity data. So it's definitely a slow-paced game, but it's very interesting. I like the um, kind of general feel. I'm not sure where we're going to go with this. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to start a Let's Play series, although I don't want to take on too much, given that we're already doing the Rule of the Waves and uh, Great War game here. We can see... We've got 25 million that's coming in from taxes, 3 million from tourism, nothing with exports or other expenses, 6 million for the armed forces, 5 million for policies, 5 million for healthcare. So it looks like we turn a 12 million profit per turn right now. Um, no trade agreements. I 
concern the parliamentary advisor. I can place a call. I can look at some policies. So we could change some of these things. So we could start spying on people with closed circuit televisions. Uh, currently, we allow alcohol, but we could ban it. So it does, again, it does strike of kind of a Islamic country or a Middle Eastern country. If you know, banning alcohol would be something that would be um, considered in the old ways. You know, as far as just kind of the old fundamentalist religion, it sounds like. So right now our prayer policy is voluntary prayer week leave. Businesses are penalized for failing to grant employees request for a week of leave for prayer week, uh, but are permitted to stay open during this time. So we could change that to prayer week practiced. Commercial and public buildings are closed for a week, while the entire country participates in a week-long period of prayer and reflection as encouraged in the text of the old ways. Or you can get rid of it altogether where it's not practiced at all. Um capable law enforcement. So we could increase our law enforcement budget. Right now, police will investigate uh, major and minor crimes. Capability limited to budget and training. Corruption remains problematic. So we could increase it to uh, model law enforcement, disciplined and well-trained, or I'm guessing we could make it a police state, um, which we probably don't want to do. So we'll leave that where it is. And actually, if we, the other thing is as you slide, if you, as you push sliders up and down, you'll see on the bottom of the map the impact it'll have on the other factions down here. So again, it would be very popular with the patriots and fundamentalists, not so much with the capitalists and liberals. Um, so we'll leave that where it is. What happens if we drop law enforcement altogether? Yeah, we'll just leave it where it is. Gambling is prohibited. We could have government-run casinos. Chances are only permitted at state-run casinos. Profits are circulated into our treasury that would make the capitalist more happy it would actually make the fundamentalist pretty unhappy uh, it wouldn't really affect the liberals at all but it would make the capitalist substantially more happy and again the fundamentalist would still be stuck at 62 percent so that's something to consider because it'll really help us gain control of that capitalist faction i don't want too many people that hate me right now, and the Patriots and Fundamentalists both like me so much. If I could narrow things out with a capitalist, that would be cool. We could also set up a disaster relief fund. Doesn't look like anyone really cares about that. It wouldn't really affect public opinion, but um, it might be a wise thing to have in case there's a disaster. Disabilities are another thing that is apparently not so important to anyone. Again, it doesn't seem like legal backlog is something people care about. Um, we have union powers are limited. If we cranked up the union laws, it would make the liberals happy, but it would make the capitalist very unhappy. And currently we have the death penalty. If we were to get rid of the death penalty, it would make the liberals very happy, but it would make the patriots very unhappy. Hmm. I mean, we could help the homeless, but it doesn't really seem like anyone cares. Liberals would like us to make alcohol more tolerated. It does make the fundamentalists less happy with us. Closed circuit television, I don't think anyone... Oh, the fundamentalists like it. Crank up that minimum wage. Yeah, I don't know what we'll do. I think I just messed around with stuff. Hmm. You know what I will do? I'm just kind of playing around and figuring things out. But I think we will look at restarting. Because, again, this was just kind of playing through the tutorial. Um, looks like... Uh, it looks like every turn we get a, a choice we need to make. Environments are deeply concerned about industrial pollution... Protect the businesses. Liberals get unhappy. Tourism revenue declines. It didn't affect the capitalists, surprisingly. 
So it looks like, yeah, as you kind of go through here, you go through each turn, fundamental is killer calling upon the government to protect luxury goods and denounce conspicuous consumption. So again, we make we agree to their request and we make the fundamentalists happy, but the capitalists become very unhappy. And I don't know how long a turn is. I don't know if it's a year or if it's like a month. Railway workers gone on strike, demanding higher wages and more state holidays. This is disrupting our ability to facilitate imports and exports. Negotiating a deal makes the capitalists very unhappy. There's a lack of compassionate programs. So again, we can go to the policies here. It'll lead into our budget, but whatever. You can see we're becoming less and less popular, by the way. United Nations has drafted a highly critical report of our human rights. Immediate reforms makes the UN happy, makes the liberals happy as well. Costs us 30 million. Riots are breaking out in the streets. Looting has cost our country 10 million this turn. Okay. Excellency, it's time for you to consider a long-term energy mix for our beloved country. From where will Basenji get its electricity, coal plants, natural gas, solar and wind farms? Um, solar and wind farms. Make the liberals happy. Apparently no one else cares as long as we have the money. And our popularity is drastically falling. Unemployment is increasing... Basenji citizens are increasingly identifying as fundamentalist. And our popularity is falling. Separatists are holding several pa uh, patients in a rural hospital hostage, demanding 40 million the release of several political prisoners. Send in the army. Patriots not happy. Fundamentalists not happy. No one likes me. Look at that. We're losing control quickly. Imports. I was to say, first, we have heard of any concerns over food safety standards. Conduct a review. Popular cleric is blaming our high divorce rate on government's reluctance to fully embrace the old ways. Um, give him money. Farouk, along with a contingent of disloyal soldiers, have marched into the Basenji Legislative Assembly, declaring a loss of confidence in your leadership. He is declaring our transitional government a failure and unilaterally suspending our constitution by force. Armored units from the military, apparently loyal to Farouk, have rolled into Hama along with, his, with paratroopers, but have no knowledge of exactly how many of our soldiers have pledged allegiance to Farouk. Close to the presidential palace, buses are being used as temporary barricades. For now, he does not appear interested in attacking this building. As of the moment, no blood appears to have been shed. But a state of emergency exists in Basanji. We appear to have time to retake the assembly, but need to first consolidate our own political influence before the public. An international community gives him any cre credibility. Okay, so it looks like we have a speech. <laughs> I really like these kind of cameos in and out of different things. It's kind of a neat little thing. Um, I'm just kind of speeding through the game, if you couldn't tell by now. I think what I may do is start a, a Let's Play of the game um, when I'm done. Uh, right now, it's a little bit difficult with all the other things I've got on my plate and all the other games. This is really just a quick run-through of the game. I'm not really thinking about the different things that I'm doing um, You know, while I'm doing them. I'm just kind of playing through with no real coherent strategy. So that's probably why I'm struggling so much. Um, but again, just keep that in mind is I probably will do uh, a more... Uh, full, thorough Let's Play at some point. Okay, so that's the end of our speech. 
Okay, so you can see the Basenji coup d'etat. I wonder, like, we're losing 10 popularity per turn. That's crazy. I wonder if we can buy the legislature. How do we... Public approval is less than 40%. Capitalist revolution, liberal revolution. Okay. I think we're pretty much screwed. Illegal immigrants are increasingly seen as taking jobs away from your citizens and contributing to unemployment. Okay, so apparently you can also... So we've got different options. So depending on what we choose, our popularity will go up or down this bar, it looks like. And again, it looks like depending on what we choose, this can affect our popularity. So if we decide we're going to go ultra hardcore and be more um, fundamentalist, you can see here that's having a huge impact on popularity. It looks like the most popular things are on the bottom. Okay. Yay, it looks like I had a pretty good speech. Fundamentalists plus seven, patriots plus three, liberals plus nine, capitalists not so much. <laughs> but we're losing the coup d'etat, so that's not good. What happens if we go in the situation room? What do we see here? Hey look, it's Barack Obama in the back here. <laughs> uh, strategic overview. Wait a minute, is that Farouk in the corner over there? Isn't he fighting me? Um, okay, so this looks like it's just kind of an international thing. So, that's neat. There's a whole situation room thing. Wait. Do we have a M WMD? Need a completed nuclear weapons. Oh, sweet, so you can develop nukes? Um, office, clandestine operations. Oh, there's a lot more to this game than I thought. I'm definitely going to do a let's play for this at some point. Even though I'm definitely going to lose in this coup. I think I just hurt the military loyalty. Probably not a smart thing to do in the middle of a coup, right? Make a holy site, but be sure to change the administration. People will flock to it. We must protect the pristine beauty of this place at all costs, even if it means restricting access. And we made the capitalists a little bit happier. Your cabinet and generals of the Basenji Armed Forces form an alliance with Farouk. The few soldiers that maintain their loyalty to you have either surrendered, been captured, or dead. Farouk has installed himself as glorious leader of the People's Republic of Basenji. His troops arrest you at one of your private residences. International reaction is mixed. Your brother charges you with inciting deadly violence, murder, espionage, and conspiracy to commit acts of terrorism. Those charges are ultimately dropped, and you're granted amnesty in exchange for permanent exile. You are, after all, family. No! <laughs> okay, so final score is 189. I guess given the fact it didn't get very far to the right, that's not all that great. That's kind of a neat little game. We kind of blitzed through it. But I do think I want to do a Let's Play at some point. And I really like the song. I don't think you can hear it, but it talks about, like, killing the king, like the national anthem of Basenji. It's a really interesting game, so I do think I am going to come back to it at some point. Um, but right now I do need to kind of keep my main focus on my Let's Plays uh, on Commander of the Great War and Rule the Waves, at least until one of those finishes, and then that'll open up some time for some other stuff. I do want to return to Scourge of War Waterloo as well. Um, but let me know what you guys thought. I was just kind of blitzing through this. I think it'd be really neat to kind of have different uh, discussions and kind of take this take this game more seriously. Um, but again, it looks like a fun little interesting game. I hope you enjoy this. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.